Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is uh, imaginary solutions to simple quadratic equations. So later we'll start factoring them and stuff, but not this one. We're just going to square root. We're going to have a x squared equals a number. So first let's uh, simplify, you guys. So um, uh, remember we can't have radicals in the bottom, but the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of negative 25 is um, uh, 5i, okay? So it's uh, 10 over 5i, and then we can go ahead and cancel. The 5 goes into 10 twice, so 2 over i. And since i squared equals negative, uh, the square root of negative 1, uh, we can't have radicals in the bottom, so we can't have an i in the bottom either. So we'll multiply this by 1, but our 1 will be i over i. And what that'll do is give us i squared, and i squared equals negative 1, so then put the negative 1 downstairs, and then this just comes out in front, so it's negative 2i on that, okay? All right, so this one here, there's a few ways to do this, you guys. I'm going to choose to uh, multiply this by um, uh, the square root of uh, negative 6 over the square root of negative 6 times 1. Okay, so this is 1, and so remember, when you multiply a radical by itself, it makes the radical disappear. So we have 2 uh, root negative 6 over negative 6, okay? And then we can go ahead and cancel. Um, um, uh, let's see, 2 goes into 6 three times, 2 goes into 2 once, and I put the negative upstairs, so I divided them by negative 2's right there. So the neg never leave the negative downstairs. Always put it either in the numerator or out in front. And then don't forget your i. we got to pull that i out of the radical right there. So that answer's cool. You'll find in the next lesson especially uh, that the book likes to put the i after the number. So, so uh, root 6 over 3i might be your book's answer. Either one of these are okay with me, you guys. I kind of like them both. So whatever, whatever you, you feel like. So find the square of the imaginary number. Okay, so that just says square that. Okay, so 7 squared is 49. I squared is I squared. I squared is negative 1. So let's go ahead and substitute that in. We get negative 49. Okay, easy. All right, this one's a little bit more tricky. It's not that bad, though. So we're going to square I, which is I squared. We're going to square the radical, which is just 5. So i squared is negative 1, so we get negative 5 on that, okay? All right, so here, let's solve and then allow for imaginary solutions. So in this lesson, I've made them all imaginary solutions, but I noticed in your textbook they might do a real solution. If this was a minus 12, then this would be a real solution. But this is a plus 12, so to get rid of this plus 12, we've got to subtract 12 on both sides and see. So here we have x squared equals negative 12, so x is the uh, plus or minus the square root of negative 12 which is i root 12 right there, because when I pulled the i out, I did that in one step, because when I square root that, and we pull the i out, okay, 12 is uh, 4 times 3, and then square root of 4 is 2, so it's plus or minus uh, 2i root 3 on that, okay? And so your book wants you to recognize that this is an imaginary solution. Again, if this would have started off with a minus 12, then we would have done plus 12 plus 12, and we would have gotten a real solution. So your book might say it's a real solution when it happens to be an x squared equals a positive number, okay? All right, so here we go. 4x squared plus 11 equals 6, so we're going to subtract 11, divide by 4, and then square root plus or minus, okay, and then we got an i on top, and then square root of 4 is 2, so we get plus or minus i root 5 over 2. Again, your book likes to put that i afterwards everywhere, so so either one's okay. If you put this, I'd take that. If you put that, I'd take that, and I bet your teacher would too. I'm not positive, but it just depends, okay? So again, your book wants you to recognize that these are imaginary solutions, okay? All right, so here we go. Here we're going to distribute the 3 through and the 2 through, and then we're going to combine like terms, so we'll subtract the 8x squared, and we'll add 21 to both sides, and that gets us 7x squared equals negative 25, another imaginary solution here. So we're going to square root both sides, and the square root of 25 is 5, so the square root of negative 25 is 5i. Okay, and then we're going to get rid of that radical, so multiply it by 1. Our 1 is root 7 over root 7, so uh, we get uh, plus or minus 5 root 7 over 7i. 7 okay, they like to put this i after all the numbers. So this is a number right here, and this i tells us it's an imaginary solution, okay? All right, so to determine the length of the side of each square using the given information, okay? And this one's just like your number 21 that you're going to be assigned. 
uh, just with a different number here. So it's exactly the same. Do the same steps. So the area of the larger square is, so area of a square is uh, uh, length times width or 2x times 2x or just 2x squared. The area of this square is x squared. So this guy is, so is is equal, 51 more than, 51 more than means a plus. So we're going to add 51 to the area of this guy, which is x squared. Okay, square them and then we'll subtract x squared from both sides and then divide by 3 then we get x squared equals 17 so x is plus or minus the square root of 17 and since we're dealing with a geometric figure we can disregard the negative sign okay so the small side has length of square root of 17 inches which is about 4.1 inch and the larger side has a length of about 2 times that which is 2 root 17 or about 8.2 inches okay Okay, this one is just like the next one, number 22. So you follow the same steps, you guys, just different numbers, okay? So it says the area of the lar if the area of the larger square is decreased by, decreased by it means minus 44. So we're going to take this area and subtract 44, and the result is going to be one-third this area, so one-third x squared, okay? All right, so square them out. All right, now we got to subtract one-third x squared. So I'm going to change 4x squared to 12 thirds x squared, okay? Then we can subtract 1 third x squared, and we get 11 thirds x squared. Do you see that right there? This 4 is 12 thirds, and then when we subtract 1 third, we get 11 thirds. All right, so now we got to get rid of this red guy, this 11 thirds right here. So we'll multiply both sides by 3 elevenths, okay? And nice and conveniently, 11 goes into 44. 4 times 4 times 3 is 12, okay? Here I have 4 times 3 is 12. Those cancel, those cancel. x squared equals 12. Okay, so we can disregard the negative. So x is the square root of 12, which is 2 root 3, which is about 3.46 inches. And then and then uh, 2x is going to be twice 2 root 3, which is 4 root 3, and then uh, which is about 6.93 inches. All right, you guys, if you are in our class, that would be your assignment. Take care.